Her doctors call her a miracle child. She's the tiniest nine-year-old you'll ever see. Hannah Smith was born with brittle bone disease. Her bones can break at the slightest touch. But this isn't really about her pains. It's not even about the pioneering treatment that allows her a normal life. It's about a fun-loving, big little girl. Karen McCarthy reports. Nine years old. It's a day Hannah Smith's family and friends never thought they'd see. Not this birthday, nor the eight milestones before it. She is a remarkable child, a true little battler, and she is literally one in a million, trapped in a tiny body that pretty much stopped growing years ago. I think for a long time, she thought she would just grow to be a normal size. Every now and again, but not often, she'll just go, oh, I don't like being small. Oh, buddies. Today, the family's on an outing to Butterfly Creek. Hannah is a keen rabbit fan and has come to choose one of her own. Look at those big, beautiful eyes, Hannah. Oh, what a solution. Hannah is the smallest and frailest nine-year-old you'll ever see. Oh, look, Lucy's coming. Have a look. I'll just show you this. She tips the scales at just on 10 kilos, about the size of an 18-month-old baby. Her bones are weakened, her growth stunted by the rare genetic condition known as OI. Not that she's ever let that slow her down. You want your bunny back? Hannah is the baby of the family, little sister to 11-year-old Nathan and 17-year-old Amy. Ready? One, two, three. Fatty McPatty. Don't call me Fatty McPatty. The two girls are particularly close, Amy almost like another parent. Mum Inika says she couldn't manage Hannah without her. We've just done one day at a time, because it was pretty much we may not have tomorrow, so let's just concentrate on today. Hannah is just like other little girls her age in so many ways. She likes to look good, loves clothes, shopping expeditions with her big sister. She's so small she has to shop from the racks of baby wear, playing fashion model in front of our camera. Back home, she's keen to show off the spoils. Dress, whatever, it's good, bring it, like it. Beautiful summer dress. Yeah, that, and this goes with it. But she's less talkative when it comes to her condition. Do you mind being small? Or do you like boring. it? Boring. It's what? Boring. Why? I don't know, because it's boring. <laughs> Makes you special. Hannah was born in 1997. With a fractured arm and healed fractures in all her limbs and ribs, she went straight on to morphine. Doctors didn't expect her to survive, but she hung on in there. Where's the new kid on the block? <gasps> there she is. Ten days later, Hannah went home. Caring for this breakable baby was a fraught affair, a kid literally wrapped in cotton wool. And here's Hannah, looking nice and peaceful now. For the first four months, she spent on her laps on a pillow. If I was changing her nappy and just knocked her as, you know, as you turn away to grab the wet wipe or something, if I just tapped her, that would be a break. Make them show she butterfly touches. Hannah's brother and sister couldn't wait to get their hands on the new baby, but it was a rare treat and only under the closest supervision. No, don't show her this, sweetheart. So brittle were her bones. In her infant years, Hannah suffered at least 20 breaks, mostly arms and legs. So were you back and forth to the hospital getting splints and things? Um, or how, I mean, how did they treat this? When she was very wee, they didn't put anything on because any weight on it would have caused more breaks anyway, so Hannah just learned to keep whatever limb 
wherever she was sore, just to keep that still. So changing her nappy, giving her a bath, changing her clothes was a bit of a nightmare. In a process of, I guess, her learning to trust that we wouldn't put her through more pain than was necessary. Hi, Hannah, how are you? Good. Good. Dr. Paul Hoffman is Hannah's endocrinologist. He's looked after her since she was a few months old. She suffers from osteogenesis imperfecta, um, a form called type 2, which in the past was invariably fatal. Okay, can I have is this? My understanding, talking to colleagues, um, suggests that the sort of deformity and growth that she's got is very characteristic of those who have survived. In other words, there is some growth, but it's actually re relatively little. So these children end up quite small, but they are mobile, they have good quality life, and um, they have fun. When you look at how possibly grim things looked at the start, how grim was the outlook? Oh, I, I don't think that H Hannah would have lasted another year and probably only a few more months when she started treatment. Because there's no cure, all doctors can do is try to strengthen the bones. They offered Hannah an experimental treatment, intravenous feeds of permidronate, a drug which ups the levels of calcium in the bone, improving its density and relieving pain. In Hannah's frequent visits to hospital, she's made a good friend, Michaela, another little girl with a milder type of brittle bone disease. She too has benefited hugely from the pioneering drug treatment. Oh, wait, 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 don't go. Hannah's infusions take nine hours, spread over three days, treatments every three months. She was a baby, just six months old when she started the infusions. The doctors agonised over whether to give the drug to such a young child. I don't like to use the term miracle, but I think if anything comes close to it, Hannah does. She's one of a kind, certainly in New Zealand. There are maybe half a dozen to a dozen children like this worldwide who have been treated um, with, this, with this drug, permidronate, um, and um, it has it is, uh, transformed their lives. Hey! <laughs> smiling? Are you smiling? For sure, Hannah can be hard to keep up with these days. Never able to walk, she's developed a novel but effective way of getting around. Like some babies, she bottom shuffles, shunning her powered wheelchair in favour of this sometimes speedy self-propelled technique. It'd be fantastic if she chose to use her power chair more, but she just doesn't like the idea of looking more different than she already does. It's too big. No? no? It's OK? Can you climb by yourself? Weekly gymnastics lessons give her muscles a valuable workout, building her strength and coordination. Got it? You're almost there. Yes! Under there? Inika used to cringe at the thought of her daughter doing anything physical, given in the past even a minor bump could break one of Hannah's bones. So this level of activity is a major milestone for mother and daughter. Oops! <laughs> Screen, man. Going to the hospital for treatments, I saw a lot of children that I felt had less than Hannah and would come home thinking, no, this is OK, we can do this. There's always been um, a joy, I guess, in caring for her and just waiting to see what she can do next. Going to school has been another recent challenge, another hurdle overcome. Hannah has just this year started attending class regularly at Carolands Primary. It's only for two or three half days a week, and although she must have a constant companion, a teacher aide, it's done wonders for her confidence and social skills. This day, family friend Shaney Healy has the job of keeping the youngster focused on her schoolwork. I think she loves the social interaction. I think she loves being at school and feeling like she's achieving like other kids her age and um, yeah no I think it's good for her to be here. Oh my gosh that would be you. <laughs> a couple of kids have asked you know why is she small or why is she you know different but they it's never caused any problems they're just curious they really like her. So we did lots of really good things at lunchtime. Hannah is almost doll-like alongside the other eight and nine year olds in her year four class. 
Because of her wee size, some of the children tend to mother her. The social part is probably the biggest draw card, but um, the work, yeah, she's, she's getting there. <laughs> She makes me so proud, whether it's at school or whether it's at home. Just She's so funny and smart for her age. And she just I said to her in a car on the way over here that I just think she's... Because she was saying, oh, I'd like to be tall like you. And I said, oh, I'd like to be happy like you because I said, you're always so happy. And, yeah, she's amazing. <laughs> if I could fall into the sky Do you think time would pass me by? She's very determined, she's very adaptable, she's quickly you know, learnt all the moves and all the, the dance steps from her big sister who you know, is, is quite cool. That he filled you with all the love and joy that makes you is so precious to us all. Pressures have taken their toll on the family. The kid's dad, Brandon, left home when the marriage broke up a couple of years ago. Oh no, what have we got? But he's still in their lives and immensely proud of his littlest daughter. Yes! <laughs> She's going through all those issues of, you know, I, I, I'm different and she's come to terms with flowers and, and now she's just getting on with her life and she's, she's created her own, her own little niche in, in the world and uh, uh, you know, I mean, everybody just that meets her is just totally, you know, um, blessed by, you know, her, her being in their lives. <laughs> there are worries over what lies ahead for little Hannah. Questions over how long the drug treatments will continue to strengthen her bones. Concerns over the deformity of her tiny frame. The biggest risk as she grows is whether her head will grow too heavy for her underdeveloped spine. But for now, she continues to make remarkable progress. She has a persistent humour. She's an indomitable will. She just keeps on going. And she gets over each crisis, just takes each day as it comes, and she's full of optimism. I've got nothing but admiration and respect for her. She's fantastic. Oh. Can I get that on? That's a keeper. <laughs> Hannah's doctors can't be sure what the future holds. They know of children like her who've reached their teenage years and are doing well, which is encouraging. There you go. But for now, Hannah faces <laughs> life as she's always done, taking it little by little, one day at a time. If you want to know more about osteogenesis imperfecta, check out our website, www.tv3.co.nz forward slash 60 minutes.